I tend to talk about Titans a lot on this channel, so guess what? We're doing it again! Hello everyone, I'm Luxon, and in this video I'm gonna try to figure out about how large the Titans in Xenoblade 2 are. I will need to spoil the entire game for this, so play it. Like, seriously, there's a week before Torna comes out. You should probably play it before then. Anyway, you might be wondering why I'm not starting with the Xenoblade 1 Titans, because it's kind of the same principle. Well, it turns out that there is actually a legitimate developer statement about how big that world canonically is. Now, yes, we know canon heights for characters in both games, and you could just literally take the models of the Titans and compare them with the models of the characters and get that, but it's worth noting that the size of the world in-game does not necessarily equal the size of the world in canon. The developer quote I'm talking about is from an IGN article that's basically a preview for the original Xenoblade from before it even came out. This is a 2010 article. And it says, and I quote, Takahashi says it's the size of Japan, although we're not sure this actually means anything until someone does a similar comparison with the worlds of other RPGs in reference to how big the Xenoblade world is. Now, if you take Shulk's model and you scale all the maps in the game comparative to him, and you add them all together, you're not going to get Japan. The common number that a lot of people like to throw around is about 30 square kilometers, which was somewhat backed up by statements about X's world before that came out. So, what does that mean? Obviously, the game world isn't Japan-sized, but we do have a developer statement saying it is. Well, basically, it means that in canon, as in in the actual fictional universe the game takes place in, the traversable area of Bionis and Mechanis combined is about equal to the surface area of the Japanese archipelago. But in-game, since you obviously can't model all of that and fit that on a Wii disc, and it wouldn't be as interesting to play, they shrunk down basically everything, as well as shrinking the distances between things, and very obviously the towns are smaller. With the amount of NPCs you see in that game, and this goes for Xenoblade 2 as well, there's obviously not going to be a functioning civilization. It just straight up wouldn't work. So, yes, Titans, as they are in-game, aren't as big as they canonically are in-universe. The problem is, all rest is obviously very different from Bionis and Mechanis, so we can't just use the same factor where one Titan equals half of Japan. So, we're gonna have to get creative, but believe it or not, Xenoblade 1's Titans would be a lot harder to find the size of if we didn't have the Japan statement. Ignoring that statement, they're actually a lot harder to figure out than the ones for 2, so... That's good, at least. It's also worth noting that I won't be going over the Tornin Titan. First off, because the Golden Country isn't out yet, so I don't have very good data. But second off, because it's by far going to be the largest Titan in Xenoblade 2. That would pretty much make, since it's not ever implied to be specifically larger than any of the other Titans. So, the fact that it has so much bigger explorable areas would mean that the scaling between its in-game size and its canon size would be different than for most of the other titans, so we're just going to focus on the larger main game titans, and I'm actually going to shrink it down a little bit more to Oriya, Morardane, and Tantal because of one very specific thing. And that thing, in fact, is this view from the world tree right here. After a certain point in the story, when Indal basically calls all the titans together to try to get them to kill everything, you can actually see three of the major titans right there, right next to each other, and you can see that they're all basically the same size. Now, obviously we already knew that Araya and Genbu, the Titan of Tantal, were about the same size because it specifically mentioned that they're the same kind of titan, and they're the only ones you go in to explore as opposed to being on top of, but it is worth noting that those three titans, and therefore probably most of the other main nation size ones, are gonna be about the same size. So we have that, we know that they're all about the same size regardless of explorable area, which is pretty worth noting because Tantal is by far the largest of those when it comes to the explorable area, just because of that huge bottom area. But how big are they relative to something in the real world? Well, we actually have a very interesting statement about that, and it's from when you first get to the first low orbit station. There is a heart-to-heart -heart where the characters are looking down at Allrest from in space, 
and they talk about how they can see the Titans. There's a little gag about how Morag sees something she thinks is more ordained, but Brigid points out that it's actually Leftheria. So, with the naked eye, a human can tell where these Titans are, distinguish them from the Cloud Sea background, but might have a little trouble distinguishing features or telling exactly how large they are or what ones they are compared to other ones. That's very interesting because of what you can actually see from low orbit. Astronauts orbiting with the International Space Station can actually see things as small as the pyramids of Giza, assuming they know where to look. Now, the thing is, even the Great Pyramid is actually smaller than the explorable area of a lot of the Titans in-game, so clearly the first low orbit station has to be higher than the ISS for anything to make logical sense. Now, I know I did actually say that it was ISS height in a previous video. I was mostly using that as an example or just to make an assumption, but this basically proves that the FLOS is higher than the ISS. The thing is, it can't actually be too much higher than the ISS, just based on the size the Earth appears to have and basically the amount of the sky it takes up still. So I'm going to go with something more like 500 to 800 kilometers above the surface, nothing more than that as the height of the first low orbit station. Now unfortunately, we don't really have nearly as much data of what a human can see from 500 to 800 kilometers above the Earth's surface, because basically no one ever put people up there in that orbit. Yeah, obviously the Apollo craft that went to the moon would be that distance away from the Earth at one point, but when they're both going out, and when they're coming back in, they have a lot more important things to worry about than how much of the Earth they can see, and the windows they had on their capsule were obviously a lot smaller than the myriad of windows the ISS has. So, what do we really do with that if we don't have any real-world data to compare to? And that is where Gemini 11 comes to the rescue. This was a US space mission, part of the Gemini program, which was designed to basically put two astronauts up together, practice working together in space, and basically pave the way for the Apollo missions to the moon. The special part about 11, though, is that it was intentionally put in a very elliptical orbit that took it as far as 1368 kilometers from the Earth's surface. And we actually have this photo that was taken from about 630 kilometers up. It depicts some of the Arabian Peninsula and some of Africa, as well as a bunch of small islands. And it's these islands that are the important thing. I can just use Google Maps to look up what every single one of these islands is, but they obviously don't have something like that in Allrest, and this is the first time since Amalthus anyone's even seen Allrest from this far up. So, I don't know, I'm gonna give Morag a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and say that the Titans probably aren't as small as the smallest islands in this picture. Get ready for me to mispronounce a couple names here, because out of all the islands in the picture, the smallest one that I'd expect someone to be able to figure out what it was if it were a Titan is Perim Island over here, with a surface area of 13 square kilometers, and the largest is over here, that's Farasan Island with an area of 686 square kilometers. So, yeah, that to me means that, as seen from above, the surface areas of the Titans, and by surface areas I mean from above, not the full surface area, because obviously you're not going to be able to live on the underbelly of something like Gormat, but because Titans are multi-layered, there's a lot more verticality in them than most places on Earth where people can live, I'm just going to say the area as seen from above is equal to the total traversable area on a Titan, and just leave it at that for simplicity's sake. So we have a really weird ballpark figure of low tens to mid hundreds of square kilometers. But where do we go from there? Well, even Farasan Island is smaller than most actual sovereign nations in modern day Earth. But Param Island is also bigger than something like, say, a small town by far. It's still many, many times the size of the Vatican, which is end all, but that's kind of besides the point. So, if they're smaller than a sovereign state, but bigger than 
a town or city, why not compare them to the size of city-states? If we're talking ancient Greece, city-states really only had a few thousand people in them unless they were called Athens or Sparta. And this does actually go pretty well with the whole Xenoblade 2 thing. If all of the population of Allrest can fit into the Elysium space station, and there are like seven to eight nation-sized quote-unquote titans, it would make sense for each of them to only have a few thousand people, but it's also big enough for there to be an entire culture and civilization without it being too small to sustain itself like it would if the amount of NPCs were the total amount of people. The thing is, we can't just say, oh, how big was a Greek city, and call that the size of a titan, because a city-state is bigger than just the city. They always had towns and small villages around them, that kind of thing, further out from the city, but still under its protection. Kind of goes with the whole Garfant thing, and we do know that there are other villages in Gormoth that we don't visit, which kind of confirms that the titans are bigger than we see in-game. We only go to the necessary part, so that's cool. As well as things like wild places that you don't usually go to, and farmland. So it does take more than just the size of the city to sustain a few thousand people, and we do see that in Xenoblade 2 as well. Now the thing is, that still doesn't really confirm the size of things, because while population is about accurate, the culture and way of life is a lot more modern in Aurest than it was in ancient Greek times. Since Morardane is at least in part inspired by Imperial Germany, I figured why not move a little north and talk about city-states and city-state type things from that part of the world. As a matter of fact, back when what's now Germany was part of the Holy Roman Empire, they did actually have something called a Free Imperial City, which was a city that was officially decreed as being self-governing and having a certain amount of autonomy, although it did obviously have to report to the Empire itself at some point. And while 13th through 17th century Germany is probably a bit closer to Allrest's culture and lifestyle than the Greeks are, the problem is that most free imperial cities had a far higher population than almost all of the Greek city-states, and therefore almost all of the nations of Allrest. The problem with that is, what do we use when going for the area? Do we take the Germans and scale them down, or do we take the Greeks as is, even though their lifestyle is different? A second problem is, whenever I looked up the size of either a Greek city-state or a free imperial city, I kept only finding numbers for the size of the city itself, and not the city plus the surrounding lands and the smaller towns and villages and that kind of thing, so we're kind of at a bit of an awkward point here. Because of this, I had to make a pretty unfortunate compromise, and this is probably the biggest leap in logic I'm making in the entire video. Basically, I'm going to use the size of any free imperial cities that still exist as significant German cities today. Initially, back during the times of the Holy Roman Empire, they were already bigger than any Aurest city would be just based on population, even if they had the same density. Plus, they'd also be bigger in physical size today in 2018 than they would back then. But that also leaves a lot more room for agricultural areas, smaller towns and villages, as well as wild areas. But I am going to also kind of add a bit more space on for the specifically wild areas like the forest below Gormot, or the old abandoned city in Morardane, or the entire snowfield in Tantal, places that you wouldn't necessarily go but would still be under the jurisdiction by virtue of being on the same Titan. Again, the size of these cities does vary quite a bit, but I'm gonna just go with the 100 to 150 kilometer range, because the majority of ones were somewhere in there. There are ones a lot smaller and there are ones a lot bigger, so I'm just going to go with those. I'm just going to straight up say double that range for all the additional areas I was talking about, and we're looking at 200 to 300 square kilometers as the traversable by humans area of the average nation titan in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So there you go. That's the answer I found after all of this. We got really, really close to getting a really accurate one, but then unfortunately had to 
kind of deviate from the accuracy a little bit to get that last figure, but I still think it does make a lot of really good sense. Now the thing with that is, now that we know about how big the Titans are, how much does it take to destroy one? Because this is something that's happened in Torn of the Golden Country, we're probably going to see it happen, and almost happened multiple times in Xenoblade 2. The thing is, in order to sink a Titan into the Cloud Sea, you only have to kill it. You don't have to destroy the entire thing, you just need to destroy the being. And that's significantly easier to do than blowing up a 300 square kilometer island, because you just need to hit it really hard in the head or some other vital area to actually take it out. We don't really know how durable a major titan is, but I'm gonna just say that, oh, maybe their hides are about as strong as the average rock for the purpose of this. And yeah, things like Temperantia are able to take really strong attacks, as seen by the Aegis Hammer Crater, but... yeah, I don't know. Either way, though, if something the size of that gets hit with a mountain-busting attack, let's just say, in a vital area, it is still probably going to get killed and go down into the Cloud Sea. So... what do we do there? I guess it means that being able to kill a Titan like both Mithra and Malos are able to do is basically just a mountain busting feat. Now the thing is, calling it Titan Buster at that point doesn't really make sense since Buster does imply being able to destroy the entire Titan in one shot. And well, yeah, Numa could probably do that easily if she tried. Ion could probably do that easily. Mithra herself might actually still be able to do it with a well enough placed Siren Shot. But yeah, if you want to talk about the ability to sink a Titan like Mithra and Malos did in the Aegis War, if you can find a character or rare blade with either a mountain busting feat or is mountain busting by scaling, then they could probably actually do that. So, not only do you now know about how big the titans are, but you now know how to destroy them. And until next time, this is Luxon, signing off. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. There are buttons for liking the video, for commenting, and for subscribing, so do the first two no matter what, and if you haven't done the third one yet, then you should, you should probably do that. The next major video you can expect me to make is one about what my moveset for Elma in Smash Brothers would be. Cuz... I'm pretty sure if she's gonna be an ultimate, she will be revealed at the direct that got delayed, and I kinda wanna have that out before then. See you next video.